Hey guys, welcome to Kumasaw Reviews. Got another one today. This time it's my first Mosho product. Well, no, because I did one years back. Their iteration on the Quan T from Double O Gundam. So, yeah. But anyway, this is one of their original designs. This is the third iteration of one of their original designs, I believe. This is Takeda, but this is Takeda Shingen. So it comes in red, which is regular Takeda. This one white which is Takeda Shingen. And then there's a black one, and I don't off the top of my head know exactly what the name of that variant of Takeda is. So, let's go ahead and get this guy measured. Because one thing about Mosho Toys that really intrigued me into finally getting one was how big I heard they were. And this is just under 10 and a half inches tall, so this is definitely a big boy. And it feels pretty weighty, too. Give you guys a roundabout here really quick. Uh, make sure that we're focused and all that good stuff. Now, I will say, it does not come with this hair piece off the bat. Um, there is a cover on the back of its head. I don't know if it's just for shipping purposes or, purposes or what, because the hair is articulated. Maybe they thought if they didn't have it in its own part of the clamshell it would break but yeah and also I should put on this back cover which comes off for the sword holster but there's that about ten and a half inches tall again take this off for a second and it's been a while since I've been able to do this but fine all right, and since this one is a pretty hefty figure, and I just recently got a new scale, let's see how much this one weighs. So making sure that you guys can see this as well. So I've got it set to pounds. Let's go ahead and put this on. So, okay, on the scale, let's see if you guys can actually see what it says. Ah, that stinks. I have no clue why it's showing up like that, but it says two pounds, four and a half ounces. So I think there are 16 ounces in a pound, so that'd put it at about two and a third, a little less than two and a third uh, pounds. That's just off the top of my head, so I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. So not bad. Pretty hefty feel, but not too heavy. It doesn't feel like dangerous to pick up and play and things like that. Now looking over the accessories here. So these two parts are just big mega axe. Um, the axe has the ability to expand and retract. And then there is a LED on it as well. Activated by one of the buttons on the side there. Okay. Turn that off. We'll go over that individually though. Big giant sword. That's the handle for the axe. Two more swords, and obviously the unsheath and everything like that. There's actually a stand for the holster. Now, this base is really cool. The part's actually magnet to it, and you can move them around and stuff, too. So there's the base, and then there's a stand that connects to the figure. And then a variety of hands, of course. There's that piece that I was saying had to come off for the hair piece to go on the back of his head. And then these are just armaments. So these pieces... The swords, um, the sheaths for the swords clip into, as well as these big giant hands. They can attach to, not only, they go over his hands like gauntlets, but they also attach to his back. So it's pretty neat. And we'll go over that. And before we get into the articulation, accessories, etc., etc., let's go ahead and go over gimmicks. Talk about the hair piece there. He does have LEDs as well. His eyes light up, and you activate that by pushing the screen button. Right there, right above the crest on his head. And then this, it's a magnet. So it didn't come with a magnet, but I just made a magnet stick. It's a rare earth magnet, um, just attached to a metal rod. And I remember where to place it. Right there. So you got to remember the sweet spot. It's not all over its chest. It's right there. Okay. So I slide up. And then if you want to see I'm not even great with it. Oh, I had it. But there we go. Take them all. Same thing. And rare earth magnets, it, it's seriously like five bucks for a hundred of these little guys. And the rods are 
like a dollar for two feet. So if you want to make one, pretty simple. I just glued it together. All right, cleaned up the background a little bit and all those accessories and stuff like that. We've already went over them in the review, so taking them out just because it's just too cluttered. Going over the articulation. All right, and this is with the hair on. So in fact, we'll start with the hair first. It does have a single joint. You could either move it so it's side to side, rotate it so it's up and down, however you want to do that one, okay? Outside of that, the hair does not move. The head. All right, so there's two joints. There's one where the neck meets the head and one where the neck meets the, or the head meets the neck, neck meets the clavicle. So you'll see two areas of articulation there. All right, you see the neck itself moving side to side, but then the head itself can, and it is on a ball joint, so it has like the 360 and whatnot, but you gotta watch out for this head piece, hair piece, whatever you wanna call it, all right? The neck does extend up. So you can get a lot more out of the upward and downward movement, which I appreciate. It's nice to see. And also, if you're somebody who likes to shoot from below, have that um, kind of heroic stance and things like that, gives you a lot more room to actually capture the head by going down. Or extending upwards and looking down. Alright, so that's the head. Shoulder pads. Let's look at the articulation on the shoulder pads themselves. So you got that little bit in front and then the back flaps move all the way up all right there's this piece inside as well these are some really in-depth shoulder flaps or shoulder pads and then those two so let's look at shoulder pad itself the shoulder pad itself is on its own hinge joint doesn't go too much side to side so the rest of it kind of moves around but all right, has a lot of butterfly, as you can see, but all right. Parallel. And then the roundabout, since the shoulder pad joint is connected to the shoulder itself, it all moves around as one, which is fine. All right, so let's look at that butterfly joint there. You can see it a bit better from the back, but lots of Good amount of forward, good amount of backwards, but the coolest part is that you can bring this whole thing out and you have two pieces of extension there. So to me, that's really neat. Looking at the rest of the arm here, 360 on the bicep, double jointed elbows, really nice die cast piece too. On the wrist, they do rotate all the way around and then it does rock as well the whole thing and then there's a little bit more rock in the hand itself as you guys saw um, there are different types of hands that are included and this ankle guard has its own articulation it pegs in and out I wish it was kind of all one piece but once you get the angle it pegs in pretty easy you can see I've taken that out way too many times all right so the rock all right right there on the on the wrist no articulation in the hands themselves comes with a bunch of different posed hands and things like that specifically made for holding weapons open this then the other okay looking at the waist here no extension or anything like that but let's start with the ab crunch you can see the ab crunch is already being utilized but look at all those ab levels multiple levels of articulation for that all right now in terms of back bend back bend all at the waist itself all right but then you could go forward and stuff like that too. And really, really make some mean stances. Okay? I know that's not everybody's thing, but it's definitely my thing. So I'm impressed as all hell. Okay? Now when it comes to the race swivel, at the waist itself, 360. Pretty awesome. Now, this crotch piece does move up and down. It's spring-loaded. Watch out. I've had it come off a couple of times, but it clips right back on. Uh, some of my friends said that their spring in there would pop out. Mine never did. It just spring stayed in place. This just became unclipped, so it was as easy as clipping it back on. But watch out. You'll need to refine that spring if it does, by chance, come out on you, okay? Now starting to look at the legs. The front skirts go straight out. These side skirts are kind of weird. They go in and out, like to the side like that. 
And then there is some up and down as well. Okay. There's that, there's that. I feel like we're just flashing at this point, but it's really cool to see. Um, the back comes out some. And here we go. All right, big old die cast thighs. There is forward and back swing at the hip itself. So you can swing it down, forward, to add some room for the articulation of the side swivel. And there you go. There's the spring, and yeah, we'll pop that back on in a second. This actually gives us more room to look at the thigh articulation. So there's that. Swing it back. Then there's the back swing. You gotta work around the back skirt, which doesn't split or anything like that, okay? Now when it comes to the thigh swivel, not 360, it is limited. More outward than inward. Comes to the knee joint, and you see that thigh animation there too, really cool. Double jointed knees, I love these die cast parts. And then when it comes to feet, rock, forward to back. All right, and you can see those guards move too. And then movement in both the front of the foot and the toe area too. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and get that piece on. And I'm just doing this on camera because, again, I've had multiple friends tell me that they've had this problem as well. I'll show you what you got to do. So you see this spring piece here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Make sure we're in focus and everything like that. Cool. So there's the spring. The spring is going to go down a little bit. And it's going to go this crevice here in between the clips. The spring is going to go under there. And then the clip is going to just clip. There's an area in here. When you have it in hand, you can see it. So basically what you do, you make sure the spring is within there. Of course, on camera, I'm not doing it as well as I should be. And then clip it back on. And boom, there you go. It's fine. Not really my first choice in the way that that's put together, but I am not a toy engineer. I'm not excusing it. Just... If I can't think of a way it could have been done better than, you know, what say do I really have. Alright. And that's the articulation portion. Let's go ahead and start looking at these accessories. Alright. And as shown earlier, we have a lot of stuff here. The base is pretty much, well, not pretty much. It's literally a big magnetic board, so... Whether it's the figure, the bottom of the feet have die cast in them, so those will stick to it. Even this piece... That's the base that the stand goes on. You see it sticks enough to start to lift that off with them. This sword display. The smaller ones go on the top. The bottom fits either the small or the big. The bigger, thicker one won't fit at the top. And we can start getting some of this together. All right, this just goes ahead and pegs in there. Now, I'm trying to think of a way to get this all put together. Just go ahead and start looking over some of the accessories one by one. How about that? So, you can have him hold this, of course, with one hand, two hand, you just have to find the one that fits. So it's going to be these guys if you want to do it like that. Best to do it separated first, like put the hands on first, and then slide them up and down to fit whatever pose you have. But then you slide the blade itself on. All right. That's the default form. Press this right here. Slides forward. Now it doesn't clip back on its own. You have to actually have to have that pushed in. Push it in and then let go. And that's how it locks. All right? So I don't remember which side it's on. Oh, the gray side. So you're going to see that side black, the side gray, the gray side actually a button. Boom. So you have lights right there all through the blade. And then some on what looks like thrusters on the back too. Really cool stuff. All right? That's that. 
Okay. Now, variety of hands are a variety of hands. When it comes to the swords and holsters, each of them inside of a sheath, they can come out like so. But instead of actually just having him in generic sword holding poses with his regular hands, let's go ahead and actually use the big old gauntlets. So, again, trying to think of what I actually want to do here. Because I can show you guys some things that kind of fit everything into one. All right? So now, to get the sheaths attached to a side skirt, there are going to be holes in each one. You take these adapters here. They have two hinge pegs, right? One in, one out. And then there's this third piece here. I guess second piece. I have to figure out because you're also going to need put that into there, that into there, and then like so. You can slide the sword up and down as you please. Then you have some rotation, you can rotate it up or down, then rotate this piece and just adjust it how you will because you got multiple pegs, multiple hinges and you can play with it some too. And what's really cool is that since you have these pieces, you know, in case it gets out of the way or something like that or gets in the way, you can actually have it outward away from the hip as well. Just whatever you want to do, lots of options. Okay, so there's that. Now. We're also going to look at the humongoid hands. So we're going to get these hands unclipped. All right, boom. And remember to pull straight to make sure you have the right angle. And then inside of each of the hands, it's going to be impossible to show you, but inside of each of the hands, there are clips as well. And I'm just making sure I'm putting the right ones on the right hand. See how easy that is to clip in without being able to see it. All right, that piece up top, square it in. All right. So there's going to be a clip and a peg on each side. Access the peg. There's going to be a cover on each forearm that pops off. Boom. Boom. What's really neat is that when you open this, it all expands. Let me like that. And it's hard because you have to have the wrist rotated the correct direction to go into the peg. And so there's that. It actually needs to be on that side. In fact, it's going to be easier if I just attach a hand. off and then peg in okay and the wrist rotate Yeah, big old giga hands. Super roboters all get out. And each of the fingers are articulated. No spread in the fingers though. Not the biggest fan of that. Let me actually re get 
that one in. Side. Make sure that's packed in. Boom. Boom. Now, the hands are actually strong enough to hold the weapons on their own without any kind of adapter. But, since I'm showing you anyway, might as well. Make sure that I got the right one. Get the adapter, however you want to do it. You can clip in the weapon first, you can put in the adapter first, however you want to do it. But once you got the adapter in, and then you can slide it up and down the adapter as you please. So with that, And these are meant to come off. I'll show you a cool trick with that in a second. But put that back. There's this cover piece here. Since we're using the big sword, we might as well have that sheath attached to them too. Take that out. Then, depends on what way I want the sheath facing. Clip it. And then it just pegs into his back there, slide it down to your preference, and there's that. All right, and putting it together, the stand is super easy. There's just a piece underneath, um, like that taint area that pops off, and then the stand plugs right in. I, didn't feel the need to show that on camera. Outside of that, there's nothing here that I haven't showed you. I showed you guys how to attach the arms, um, how the stand and base works. The cool thing about it being just a magnetized piece is that you don't need to do any adjusting or anything like that. You can just rotate this on the base however you want it to go. Just get those correct angles and stuff like that. It's really freaking cool. Let me put this out a little bit so you can see his face better. Yeah. I like that quite a bit. We showed how to activate the LEDs, how the sword attaches to the hands. Just making sure there's no hidden business here. The only thing that I did the same way that I attached um, this sword sheath, the bottom one, to the skirt, uh, I just took another adapter and played right on top of that because there's an extra peg in case you want to do two. In fact, uh, nope, there's not an extra adapter because I was going to say you could do another one if you wanted to. No, it stops at two. Yeah, there's that. Pretty freaking cool, man. Just massive. Alright, before we get you guys out of here, just want to show you one more thing. This is not in the instructions, but... Plenty of pictures on it online, not hard to do, but if you want to attach the hands onto the back, you just take those shoulder pads out, which popped off earlier, use one of these adapter pieces, all right. get it put in there. They don't fit snugly all the way down, which kind of dampers it, but yeah. All right, and then you've got this piece here that you normally plug the sword holsters into. Uh, you get it in there, and once again, another one where it's not really a snug fit. But then there are two circles here, you can, or female pegs. Choose which one you want. And then, voila. Just want to make sure you guys can see it. Then just rinse, wash, and repeat for the other side. 
All right, and closing this one out, uh, we've pretty much got everything. We've got the Giga Axe. Um, we've got the two blades there. The one thing that I forgot to go ahead and get together while I knock some stuff over is the eye lights. Okay. I think that's a good representation of pretty much all of the accessories at once. There will be plenty of pictures on the article and gallery on Kumasawa.com showing just the individual pieces and stuff like that utilized, but kind of a catch-all. Save us all some time here. And I mean, it's awesome. Let's be real. It's big, it's articulated, uh, the design is super cool, it's got LED gimmicks, if that's what you're into. Not really my thing as much as it used to be, but I mean, they're cool, well implemented, just in the chest, the eyes, um, weapon, easily accessible, button press, no opening panels or anything like that, so that's really cool. I... The only real critique I have about this is the lack of accessories in terms of the pieces that connect uh, the arms, big arms. They also connect, like I said earlier in the review, the sheaths for the swords to his side skirts here. If they had just included two of everything, you'd be able to go ahead and attach, you know, something like this on the side as well as the other side but you can't i hate having to pick and choose where to put just one weapon because even right now like let's say i had the arms not holding the swords okay and just an aside since there's only one um piece for the big arms to hold the swords you know one of them's just gripping one of them's actually got the sword clip piece inside of its hand that whole one of everything especially on some of these higher end higher price products that's just cheaping out and it doesn't even make sense so they need to do better about that um going forward whether they will or not we shall see but i will call it out every time that i see it because it's bullshit outside of that solid product solid look i mean i really like it am i gonna go collect every single mosho piece Probably not, um, just because of where I'm at with collecting and more generic mecha and stuff like that. If it's a standout design like this, most definitely, but some of their other stuff is, eh, Super Robot Wars stuff kind of fills my itch for original designs that kind of have ties to this, that, and the other, you know, that kind of thing. So that's where a lot of their other designs fall in line for me, but stuff like this, completely unique and whatnot. I'm all about it, man. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Be well, be safe. And I'll see you next time. Make sure to keep your eye on kumasal.com as well as my Facebook page for links to that stuff so that you know when the article and gallery gets published for this guy. Again, this has been Mo Shows, uh, Takeda Shingen.